Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Let the church say amen one more time. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Are you thankful today, saints? Amen. Amen. He keeps blessing you every time you get up out your bed. You have eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. That's the grace of God that's resting upon your life. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer this morning as we prepare to go to the book of Nehemiah, the second chapter. We're going to talk this morning from Nehemiah, the second chapter. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you again this morning. The God that you have brought us to this place again. Lord, we thank you that you said in your word is now time for the true worshipers to worship you in spirit and truth. God, you are a spirit, and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and truth. So, Father, as we as all made our way to this building, God, one have come for one thing, and one have come for another. But, God, I pray collectively right now that we have all come to lift up holy hands and give you what's worthy unto you. You said in your word, Lord God, that you've given us a name that's above all names. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess. And so, Father, the atmosphere is already set. The record has already been written. Now it's time for your people that have breath in our lungs to give you what belongs to you. Lord, we magnify you. We praise you. We honor you. We give you thanks, God. We thank you, God, for watching over us, Lord God, as we laid down last night. We thank you, God, as we raised up this morning that we're still closed in our right mind, God, with eyes to see and ears to hear. We thank you, God, for the strength of the activity of our limbs, God. We give your name the glory and the honor. But we thank you most of all, God, that you are for us. And you said if you are for us, you're better than the world that's against us. We honor you and praise you this morning, God, that our mind is made up, Lord God, to give you what belongs to you. Now, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus as we prepare to minister this morning, thank you for the anointing that already rests upon my life. But God, stir up the spirit on the inside. Let it be like fire shut up in my bones. I pray, God, as the word come forward today, God, it would fall on good grounds, God, that one would plant, one would water, but you would give the increase. God, stir your people up today, Lord God. Let them know that you are God, and beside them there is none other. Breathe in this place, Holy Spirit. Breathe like you breathed on the day of Pentecost, that as we walk away, we'll know without a shadow of a doubt that we've been in your presence. We honor you, we praise you, we thank you, and we give your name the honor for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, clap those hands this morning. Come on, clap those hands this morning. Like your God is a God of victory, amen. We don't serve a God of defeat. We serve a God of victory in the name of Jesus, and we honor him this morning. We give God the honor and praises for another opportunity, saints. We are so excited to be here this morning. I don't know about you. I'm excited to be in this place. Yeah. Amen. A place where I can live in freedom, a place I can walk in freedom, but most of all, a place where I can worship in freedom. And so we honor God for that this morning. We thank God for our wife. The first lady is not with us again this morning. She has a cold. Amen. And amen. She don't want to be contaminating anybody in the ministry, amen, this morning. So she's back home. Thank God for Zoe being with us this morning. We give him the honor and glory and praises, amen, for what he is doing in my house. Thank God, amen, for Reverend Staten, Reverend DeBro in his absence. We honor, honor them, amen, for the ministry that God has called them out to do in their, this hour of their time of their lives, amen. Thank God for our deacons, amen. We honor them. Thank them, amen, for their servant, amen, and their servitude as well for those that are on board to become deacons amen we praise god for their commitment as well we're grateful for our trustees this morning amen we give god the and glory for the work that they're doing amen in this body of believers thank god for our ushers this morning we honor them amen thank god for our sound ministry our media ministry thank god for our way praise and worship ministry this morning come on give god a hand clap of praise for this praise and worship ministry this morning 
And thank God for Reverend Brown, amen. And we thank God most of all for you. I, re I remember a long, long time ago, Sister Peggy, it was a young lady by the name of uh, Dr. Mamie Coker that was a part of my church when I was uh, in South, Car South Carolina. I was an interim pastor. And I remember her saying, Reverend State, and I remember her saying that, you know, this is all we have, and we ought to be appreciative of it. Amen. And that's why every Sunday, saints of God, I'm appreciative for what we have. Amen. Amen. It may not be what other people have, and I don't need to have what other people have. I just thank God for what God has given me. And so please don't ever, know, don't ever think that as your pastor, amen, I get depressed or get down and burdened down about, amen, the ministry, because I don't, because the ministry don't belong to me. The ministry belongs to God, and he has invited me to be a part of the ministry. And I think if most people, amen, took that mindset, amen, they would not be, amen, so, amen, dogmatic when it comes to God's people. You belong to God, amen. I belong to God. Yeah. And all, all God has called me out to be is to be a steward in your life, amen, before we all transition to see him face to face. You know all of us are going to stand before God and give an account, amen, for what he has asked us to do here on earth. And I praise God. I know my assignment. I'm not even worried about it, amen. I, I know my assignment. I know what God has called me out to do. And I'm willing to do what he's asked me to do. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning before we get right into our word. Nehemiah, the second chapter. Nehemiah, the second chapter. We're going to talk about changing the atmosphere. Changing the atmosphere. Nehemiah, the second chapter, the fourth and the fifth verse. Very, very good book, saints. I would encourage you, amen, you to study your Bible. You want to see a great leader? Nehemiah was a great leader in his hour, amen, because he had a heart to change the atmosphere, amen. In 1985, a group of black South African theologians wrote a response to the recent crackdown by the apartheid government. It was called the Kairos Document and began by saying, the time has come, the moment of truth has arrived. This document provided a strong sense that time was ripe for change. The destiny and the future of South Africa stood on the knife edge of this written document might have the power to change the past history. And my brothers and sisters, contrary to proper belief, a proper opinion, change will happen. And one of, uh, one of the most interesting things about change that I have discovered is that most people, amen, only change with things that they believe that will affect them and improve their household. For example, I'm sure that everyone in, upon the sound of my voice, you take advantage of your civil right to vote. I don't believe there's nobody in this room, amen, besides Zoe, amen, and she's 18 now that, amen, is, don't have the opportunity to go to the polls and vote. Well, the reason why you and I go to the polls to vote is because we vote for things that will affect us in real time. We're not voting for things that happened yesterday. We're not voting for things that happened two years ago. We're voting for things that will, help, will affect us in real time. Well, Pastor, why do you say real time? Because real time is what happens and what goes on in time zones. And now, if the truth be told, brothers and sisters, do you that are listening to this message this morning, all of us are living in a different time zone. How do you know that, Pastor? Because every one of us that walk in this building have a different concern, have a different care, and we all have a different conclusion. And based upon our care and our conclusion and our, our concern, we have the ability, amen, to come in with a different atmosphere. Every person that came in this morning, you come in with a different atmosphere, meaning that your problems is not my problems, and my problems is not your problem. But when you walked in the room, amen, you came in with your problems all on your shoulders. And we come here to, put, to cast our cares on God because God cares for us. When we look at the word time in the Greek, in the Greek dictionary, Time has two, two, two words that we sometimes go by. You've heard me talk about this before. We look at time from a kairos perspective. Amen. Kairos means that time is based upon seasons. 
And then we also look at time from the Greek word when he talks about kairos, I mean, uh, uh, chronos. Well, chronos is based upon chronological time. Now, we all know here in Virginia, the time is different than it is in California. Amen. That's called chronos time. Amen. But we also know in, in our lives, every one of us are in a different season. Your season is not my season, saints. And my season is not your season, but every one of us are placed in a season that God wants us to change the atmosphere. And that's why Solomon provides to us wisdom on this subject based upon time. He says to everything, there is a season, a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which you planted, and a time to kill, and a time to heal, and so on and so forth. So as a result, we are all living different time, in different, different time zones. Every one of us in the room have a different time zone because all of us are in a different season. Are y'all with me this morning? And that's why God tells us that when we find ourselves in these different time zones, we have to take authority over the time zone that we're in and change the atmosphere. Pastor, what do you mean when you say change the atmosphere? I am saying that God has called you and I out to be people that would change our surroundings. I don't know any woman in this room, amen, that don't have a house, that don't like to sometimes rebuild the house or like to change the furniture in the house. I know my wife all the time is changing the furniture in the house. Why? Because she's changing the atmosphere. And that's why the Bible says, according to Genesis, amen, the first chapter, the 26th verse, the Bible says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominions over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creepy thing that creep upon the earth. And so what God says in the scripture, he says that he wants his people to be people that have a mind to change the atmosphere. Amen. If we take a look, amen, this morning at Proverbs 31st chapter, we know that Proverbs 31 talks about that virtuous woman. Well, may I suggest you this morning, the virtuous woman, according to Proverbs 31 and 16, this virtuous woman is a woman who changes the atmosphere. The Bible says that this virtuous woman, according to Proverbs 31 and 16, she considers a field and buy it. For her profit, she plants a vineyard. And I don't know about nobody in this room this morning. If you're going to say that you're a person, that you're going to be virtuous, you cannot stay the same or stay in the same condition that God has called you out of. This virtuous woman, according to Proverbs, was a woman that she had entrepreneurial mindset. She looks out, she buys a land. And she don't just buy that land to hold on it, amen, but she invests in her land that her land, amen, will bring forth a reproduction. I wish I had one or two people in this room this morning that understands that God has called you out and given you power to change your atmosphere. Y'all with me this morning? In our text this morning, Nehemiah was the king and the cupbearer who had the desire to change his atmosphere. The scripture says, and it came to pass in the month of Nisi, in the 20th year of King Architex, when wine was before him, that I took the cup and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said, why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is not, not because of sorrow heart. But because I, I'm dreadful afraid, said the king, may the king live forever. So why should my face not be sad? This is Nicodemus, I mean, Nehemiah saying, when the city, the place of my father's tomb lie waste, and it, its gates are bur burned with fire. And because Nehemiah had a heart for the city that he was a part of, he found himself in a place where his heart was heavy. And may I suggest you some saints of God, if we are really 
truly people after God's own heart, there is no way possible you can live in this world that you live in and sometimes your heart don't get heavy. Amen. Because when I look at the condition of people and I look at the condition of our communities and I look at the, the condition, amen, of what the world is going in, my heart becomes heavy. It causes me, amen, to want to be a person that would change the atmosphere. Y'all with me this morning. And so, Nick, so, so, so Nehemiah is at a place, amen, in his servitude where he wants to go back to the city. He wants to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the wall. And I know you're saying this morning, Pastor Choice, amen, what do I need, amen, to be a person that rebuilds? Well, the first thing you need to understand, if you and I are going to ever rebuild anything, you got to learn how to pray. Are y'all with me this morning? Prayer is the way you and I get our, our message crossed to God that God would move on our behalf, and when he moves on our behalf, things will change. The Bible picks up, amen, in Nehemiah, the second chapter, the fourth verse. The Bible said it this way. It says, then the king said to me, why do you, what do you request? And so I prayed to the God of heaven. Now, Nehemiah is not in Jerusalem. He's in another city called Shusham. Shusham is a city, amen, that where they kneeled it down to idol worshipers. But when Nehemiah is asked what he wants from him, he prays to the God of the heavens. Can I tell you something this morning, saints of God? If we're going to experience the Alpha and the Omega, if we're going to begin, we're going to experience the beginning and the end. If we're going to see change in the world in which we live in, we got to start praying more to the God of the heavens. Because why? He sits high and he looks low and he has all power in his hand. And he says you have not because you ask not. But when you ask, you got to ask in faith and believe that he's able to do everything but fail. Are y'all with me this morning? So Nehemiah shows us, Brother Willie J, he wants to change his atmosphere. But he don't do it based upon human wisdom. He don't do it based upon human strategy. But he gets down on his knees and began to start talking to God. And I don't know what he said. Maybe he repeated the Lord's prayer. Maybe he said, God, I need your help. I don't know what he said. All I know, Sister Karen, he prayed to the God of the heavens. And I wish I had about one or two people here at Carrie's. That you were just set in agreement with your pastor. That we're praying for this youth movement. That we're praying that God will supply all of our needs. That we're praying that the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. That God will send more labor. I wish I had one or two people in the room, amen. That you would just make up in your mind. Stop fighting the plan, but get on the plan of prayer and see God change things. Yeah. Nehemiah shows us in the scripture. He shows us that he wants to change his atmosphere. But he lets us understand the only way change can happen, it's got to start by prayer, supplication, going to God and talking to him about the situation. It's got to go by, it's got to start by talking to God before you talk to anybody else. Talk to God and he will tell you what you need to do. That's why Paul says, Scripture, Romans, the 12th chapter, second verse, he says, do not be conformed to this world. To the world says, in order to gain our children back, let them do whatever, whatever they want to do. The world says, if you're going to draw people to Christ, amen, give them something. But the, but the word says, amen, it says, with, he says, he that, if I be lifted up, I'll do the drawing. So when we are not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the new, renewing our mind, we can prove the good and perfect will of God. Are y'all with me this morning? I hope I'm preaching right this morning because I feel like preaching. Are y'all with me? So Nehemiah says, I want to change my atmosphere, but I'm not going to do it by old strategies. I'm not going to do it by manipulation, amen. I'm not going to do it by my man's mindset. I'm going to pray 
to the God of the heavens. And I don't know about you every now and then. Amen. I just lay myself down and I begin to talking to the God of the heavens because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I'm able to ask or think through the power that worketh in me. He says if you pray to me one, I'll open doors that no man can close and I'll close doors no man can open. I pray to the God of heavens that it keeps my family, amen, protected. I pray to the God of heavens that this ministry will flourish in God. So if you're going to change the atmosphere, saints, we got to go back how the old saints used to do. We got to start praying. We got to start believing by faith that God will do everything but fail. Are y'all with me this morning? Second thing that Nehemiah shows us in the scripture, he said, listen, not only am I a man of prayer, but I'm a man that can persuade the king. Are y'all with me this morning? Look what that first clause says in verse 5. The first clause, he says, and I said to the king, if it please the king, if your servant has found favor in your sight. Now, Pastor, you gotta, you gotta help me, help me, amen, dissect this in this morning. I'm glad you asked. What Nehemiah says in the scripture, if you are going to effect change in your atmosphere, you gotta be a person that can bring forth influence in your atmosphere. And can I tell you something this morning, saints of God? What I've discovered. Without the help of God on our side, you cannot influence no one. Because everybody's mind is made up and everybody want to do their own thing. But if God be for you, who can be against you? When God is on your side, Brother Eddie, you have the power to influence those around you. Are y'all with me? Notice what he says, if it please the king. It says, if your servant has found favor in your sight. What Nehemiah is saying, the favor of God gives him the grace of God. And when God's grace rests on your life, you can have influence, man. That means that God says, amen, you can speak, amen, and it shall come to pass. He says in his word, amen, if you have faith, a size, come on, like a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain, mountain shall be moved, and whatever you do, it shall not, amen, it shall prosper, amen. I know I'm paraphrasing, but what he's saying in the scripture, when God has favor on your life, you have persuasion. I don't know about you, saints of God, but I want to be a person that every time I stand up, no matter what setting I'm in, I want to influence people that Jesus is Lord. Are y'all with me this morning? No matter if I'm in the building, amen, or if I'm in the job, when I stand up and speak on behalf of God, they know that he is God. Scripture said it this way in the book of Proverbs, 13, chapter 15, verse. It says, good understanding gains favor. Meaning that when you get a good understanding of God, God will give you grace, which is going to give you favor. But the ways of the unfaithful is hard. So the reason why Nehemiah understood that he needed favor from God, or he needed favor from the king, because if the king did not decree it, it wouldn't take place. Can I tell you something this morning, saints of God? The king have decreed that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We are the blessed and not the curse. Amen. We're blessed going in and we're blessed going out. Amen. Why? Because he has persuaded us that he is God and beside him there is none other. Are y'all with me this morning? I know I'm filled, with, I'm filled with God this morning, saints of God, because amen, he's filled me up and he's let me understand Warren, I've called you out, not you to just sit back idly and watch the world fall apart, but I've called you back that you will be a persuader in the hour that you're in. And the only way you're going to be persuaded, amen, you're going to be a persuader, I've got to put favor upon your life. And that's why Jesus says, amen, thank you, Holy Spirit. When he says, amen, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news. Are y'all with me? That was God's favor of persuasion on his life. So our second point is, Sister Bark, if we're going to be people that changes our atmosphere, we're going to change our surroundings, you got to know how to persuade. Amen. And your persuasion is not based upon how long you've been a part of the church. 
Your persuasion is not based upon how much money you pay. Your persuasion is not based upon, amen, what you know about the history of the church. What your persuasion is based upon is God's favor resting upon my life. Praise God. That's why David says, I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Come on, I'm preaching better than you praise. And amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Third point, David, I mean, Nehemiah says, not only do you, you got to be a person that pray, you got to know how to persuade, meaning that when you walk into a room, everybody knows that you are a child of God. Yes. You don't have to have no Bible. Right. Amen. You ain't got to be speaking in no tongue. All you do is walk in, and they can see the glory of God upon your life. Are y'all with me? Amen. Last point he says right here in the book. In that same verse, that fifth verse, Brother Michael, he says, amen, that you now that you can persuade, you must have a plan. Yeah. Right there in the Bible, it's right there in the book. That, that B clause says, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tomb, that I may rebuild it. I wish I had some help in this room this morning. That Nehemiah had a plan to rebuild because old things had passed away, and behold, now all things are new. He's looking to the future and not to the past. He had a plan to rebuild. And may I tell you something, saints of God, I have a plan for this ministry. Pastor, what is your plan? I come here to develop disciples of all ages, teaching them to know that they're born of the Spirit of God, and all of God's promises belong unto you. That's why I preach so hard. That's why I teach so hard, because I'm trying to develop you that God is on your side. This plan that he has, he, he breaks the plan down. He wants to rebuild. And saints of God, I don't care what nobody tell you. Every now and then, some things got to be rebuilt. We don't drive antiques no more, amen. And we don't drive T models no more. We drive electric cars now, amen. People don't, some, some people don't get the newspaper, amen, by somebody throwing it at your front, dead front door. We read the newspaper over the internet. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. We don't, amen, send letters some, no more. Some of us don't. Some of us, amen, read emails. Why? Because God is rebuilding in the earth. And so he says, listen, my plan, king, it's to rebuild. Have you ever thought about maybe God has not put people in certain places because they don't have a plan? Amen. Have you ever thought about that? I think about that quite often when I think about ministry. Amen. 30 years in June, I'll be preaching the gospel for 30 years. And in my 30 years, everywhere I've ever been, God has always allowed me to have a, a platform to talk about his glory and his, and his presence. And how is that, Pastor? Because every place God ever sent me, I had a plan. Amen. And my plan was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ that someone would be saved. Can I tell you something this morning, saints of God? There are many people, amen, that has missed their assignment because they didn't have a plan plan. And I'm telling you something this morning, God wants you to have a plan. Amen. If you don't plan, amen, you're going to fail. Amen. He wants you to have a plan in your salvation. He wants you to have a plan in your faith. Amen. He wants you to have a plan in your ministry. No leader is worth their salt if they don't have a plan. Amen. You, amen, when you see me, I got a plan. I'm going to tell you where we're going. I'm going to tell you how long it's going to take to get there. I'm going to tell you, amen, that God is going to be our provider that takes us to the place that we shall not fail. That's why Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, the 11th verse, he says, Therefore, encourage one another to build one another up, just as you are doing. Paul says that we ought to be people when we see each other, build me up. Don't tear me down. Pray for me, amen, and don't pull me apart, amen. Build me up that God will be glorified. So, Pastor, what are you saying this morning? What I'm saying is we live in a forever changing world. Everything is changing. Gas prices are changing. Food prices are changing. Seasons are changing. However, the God whom we serve changes not. Hebrews 13 and 8 says Jesus Christ 
is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And therefore, in our text today, Nehemiah knows that God, the God of the heaven, he takes a risk by asking the king to let him operate and go back to change the atmosphere. And that's why we ought to all always praise Jesus, because the Bible says in Luke, the 19th chapter, the 10th verse, for the Son of Man come not to seek, but to save those alone. Make no mistake, my brothers and sisters, amen. God sent Jesus to the earth to change his, the, the surroundings. And when he came to the earth, amen, he was a change, the situation at hand. But here's my question this morning for us here at Caris Baptist Church, amen. Jesus has called you out to be a game changer. And every situation he calls you in, he wants you to change the atmosphere. Amen. And you may say, Pastor, how can I change the atmosphere? Amen. I don't have a title. Amen. I don't, amen. I don't have a position when it comes to the place of God. Well, here I hear the Lord saying, upon this rock. I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail again. If you are part of the ecclesia, amen, the body of Jesus Christ, God has called you out to be a game changer. And when you walk into a situation, God will give you the power to do everything but fail. I praise God this morning for Nehemiah because Nehemiah teaches me as a child of God that I ought to have a heart to see things change. Amen. Nehemiah had a heart to see the city, amen, walls be revealed. Nehemiah had a heart, amen, to see the city, amen, be built back up. And we as people of God, amen, our hearts should be connected to God. And when our hearts are connected to God, God will give us the power to be a game changer. And I'm glad to know this morning that no matter what comes and no matter what goes, I'm going to stand on God's word. And I'm going to stand on God word until he changed the situation. I'm going to be just like Jacob. I'm going to wrestle with the angel until the break of dawn. And I'm not going to let God go until he changed the situation. And I don't know about you saints of God. I've made up in my mind, amen, that if God is all in the change of game, amen, I'm going to be a part of the move of change. Are you with me this morning? Are you going to be a part of the movement of change? Amen. If you're going to be a part of the movement of change. You got to start praying. Amen. That means seek the face of God. And when you pray, amen, you got to ask God to give you a persuasion. That means when you get up off your knee, when you open up your mouth, everybody will know that your God is really real. But the last point, you got to have a plan. Amen. That means that you got to ask God to order your footsteps. Come here. Amen. Proverbs. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path your plan amen will this to prosper and be in good health as god has called you to prosper so saints of god god has called us out to be game changers and to change the atmosphere in which we're living in come on give god a hand clap of praise this morning if you believe that i praise god for nehemiah this morning because nehemiah helps me understand that God is always in the changing business. Contrary to proper belief, saints, I know that people don't like change. And I know they're comfortable where they're at. But the Bible says, unless the Lord build the house, who's building the house? Are we building the house or is God really building the house? Change is needed in order for God to be glorified. And so this morning, all I'm telling you, that God has called us out to change the atmosphere. The same way Nehemiah had a heart, amen, to see the walls be revealed. We ought to not just settle, amen, because it's just that way. No, you ought to say, amen, if God be for us, who will be against us? No finances, no sickness, amen, no poverty, no man. If God be for us. Who is against us? And so I praise God this morning for the faith that Nehemiah shows us. Amen. We ought to pray. Amen. We ought to be persuasive, be a, per a persuader. But most of all, you got to have a plan. Every leader in this ministry, you ought to have a plan. Amen. When people come, you ought to have a plan. 
How many times do you come in this ministry? And I said to the poor people, said, now what I'm going to preach about today? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe, maybe Matthew said, no, every time I said to the poor people, I got a plan. Because your time is not to be wasted, and your time is very valuable for, before God. And so God is trying to show us. If you're in headship, if you're in any type of leadership in this ministry, have a plan. Amen. Make sure your plan can persuade. But the most important thing, be a person that will pray that God's favor will rest upon your life. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. We're done. Amen. Amen. We're done. We never assume that everybody with this message is saved. We never assume that. And we never assume that everybody that's saved can change the atmosphere. Saints, it takes faith to change the atmosphere. You know, I was reflecting last night. I've been here four years now at Carries. But this church is over 100 something years old. And the Lord began to speak to me and said, Warren, four years does not outweigh 100 and something years. Meaning that it's going to take some time, it's going to take some prayer, it's going to take some supplication, it's going to take some fights, it's going to take some warfare to change some things. That's what the Lord shared with me last night. Many people get discouraged because they sow the seed and want the seed to grow right overnight. It don't happen like that, saints. And I know that some people, Amen. Believe that they run people off. You can't run nobody off this planet by the river. Amen. God's going to bring forth change in this room, I'm telling you. And so while, he, while I was reflecting last night, he said, Warren, don't get discouraged. Amen. It's going to take more than four years to change over a hundred some years of what's been going on. Yeah, that's what he told me, saints. Believe it or not, God speaks to me about the ministry. And I tell people quite often that as a pastor, God speaks to me about the people. He may speak to you about you, but he don't speak to you about everybody in the room. I know that some people don't believe that the pastor has no authority. He don't have no, amen, no insight. But can I tell you, that's a lie straight from the devil. I see more than you think I see. I know more than you think I know. And you don't have to tell me. Because I already know it. Amen. You don't have to tell me. I already know it. Amen. Because I have insight with God. Amen. And I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. Because I'm not one of them, pe them preachers in the box. I'm outside the box. Right. Why? Because I'm saved. I'm filled with the Spirit of God. I'm not threatened by nobody saying, we'll run you off. We'll get no, I'm not threatened by that. Please hear me when I tell you this. I wanna, we don't have no guests in the room. We're all just family. So I can set the record straight. Not intimidated by it. <laughs> Why? Because God has rooted me here and grounded me here. And as long as I do what God tells me to do, his grace will always rest on my life. Pastor, how, how can you have so much fire every Sunday? Because I stay in his presence. I'm going to leave here today. I'm going to go home, take a nap, Sister Peggy. I'm going to get right back in his presence. Right. Say, fill me up, God, because the morning is coming, and somebody going to need a word from you. So I want to share this morning, there's anyone in the room, when you go in your atmosphere and you want to make change, if you want to teach them how to be saved, here it is, Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th and 10th verse. That's why I repeat this every Sunday. Because some of you are like I am. We go into communities, we go into conversations where people are not saved. And we are saved. And if they ask you, how do I become saved? You say, according to the scripture, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Remember, I've been called here to develop disciples of all ages, teaching them to know that they're born of the Spirit of God and all God's promises belong unto them. 
And so every one of us in the room this morning, now the accountability lies upon you and I. That God's going to call us into places. And if you let that place stay that place, stay that way, amen, and you know those poor people are not saved, woe be unto you. Woe be unto you because God is showing us that, ne that Nehemiah had a heart to see the walls rebuild. He had a heart for people to be saved. He didn't have a heart to compromise. Come on, pastor. Amen. Don't fuss. Amen. He had a heart, amen, to, amen, to bring forth confusion. He had a heart to bring forth Christ in the midst of that situation. And that's what God is calling us to be, amen. We are living in a terrible world, saints. A terrible world. A terrible world. And we say we feel with God's Holy Spirit. We got so much power in our life. But when we go into a room, we don't effect change. So God is saying be a game changer. Don't let it stay the same. Don't let it stay the same, Brother Eddie. Don't let it stay the same, Deacon Banks. Don't let it stay the same, Reverend Stay. Don't let it be, stay the same. But be game changers. And make it move the way Reverend Brown. Don't let it stay the same. Come on, let's pray. Father, thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the boldness, God, that you placed on the inside of us. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. For God, your word is a lamp to our feet, a light unto our pathway. Thank you, God, that you are God who has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. God, your word said we ought to come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. And so, Father, as we stand this morning, we stand boldly upon your word, God. Because you said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness they are. And the world and they that dwells are in it. You said no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us, it shall be devoured. You said in your word, God, that old things are passed away. And behold, all things are new. You said the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. So, Father, I stand on your word this morning, God, that every need that we have here at Carries, God, you're able to supply it. You said the harvest is plenty. You said the labors are few. Pray to the God of the harvest that he will send labors. God, we need labors here in this ministry. God, we have people that are doing multiple things, many different things. One person doing four or five things, God. God, that's not how you designed it. You designed it, God, that we will be one body, one spirit, and one baptism, God. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you send us more people who have a heart to build, who mind is made up. Father, I ask you for that this morning. I ask you, God, that you will bring in from the north, south, east, and the west that every ministry in this place, God, will be fulfilled. And Father, I bless you and I honor you right now that you are God who answers all of our requests. You said we have not because we ask not. So, God, we ask you this morning, God, we lift up, Lord God, all of the members here at Carries. God, many of them have lost loved ones. You know their names, God. We pray for them Right now, God, we lift up Mr. Charles Banks. We pray right now in Jesus' name, God, that you would deliver him out of the hand of the enemy. Yes. Sickness and diseases upon his body, God. But you said by your stripes, we are healed. Yes. And God, every other person, I don't know, I pray right now in Jesus' name, God, that you rescue them from the hand of the enemy. Yes. Lord, I thank you for prayer. I thank you that every time we call out your name, God, you hear us, and you move on our behalf. Now, Father, you continue on being glorified. You said in your word, if we would lift you up, God, you would do all the drawing. Lord, thank you for the power that you have invested on the inside of me. I thank you, God, as a humble pastor, I stand before you. Lord, God, asking that you fill me up even more. Every time I stand, God, I ask that the people would see less of me and more of you. Pray, God, that the ministry you placed on the inside of me, God, will be effective, Lord God, for the use in the hour that we're living in. But most of all, God, I pray the ministry you've given us will persuade someone that they need to be saved. They need to be born again, God. They need to know who you are. They need to come to know you as their Lord and their Savior. God, we give your name the glory and the honor. 
We thank you for it, God. It is so in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands like you mean it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Change the atmosphere, saints. Let's not stay the same. Be game changers for God. Don't be game changers for yourself. And all of us got our own selfish ambitions in this room. Make sure our, our selfish ambitions line up with God and God alone. That's who we want to line up with, God. When we speak, we want to speak on behalf of God and not our own. Amen. Come on. Come on, choir. Come on. Come on. Praise God from home. All blessings flow. for the benediction now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit God let's let it rest rule and abide within our hearts God all I ask that you go before us Lord tear down what needs to be torn down build up what needs to be built up God let us be prayers let the anointing rest on our life that we can persuade but God always give us a plan that we can rebuild in the earth we love you we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Make sure you love somebody, amen.